According to the latest stats, Windows 10 has made its way onto roughly 7% of desktop PCs. So why the low number? Are people lazy? Are they scared of change? Well, we're here today to help ease your mind and let you become one of us. One of us. One. One of us. One of us. It's not a chant if it's just you, Jack. Only Jack. So first off, if you missed our last video on how to prepare for Windows 10, you can click right in one of those two places. One of the topics we covered is the pricing of Windows 10. It's free for the first year. You have until July of 2016 to redeem your... Maybe that's why people haven't upgraded yet. They've got till July of 2016. Well, but you can do it now and you can redeem your Windows 10 copy if you are currently running a legit copy of Windows 7 or Windows 8.1. After that one year period, Windows 10 will need to be purchased. So there you go. For the people who were super skeptical about, you know, well, do I really want to pay for this? Well, they don't have to, and they can join in on the fun of having a new operating system. If you're a Windows 8.1 user and absolutely hate the Tile app interface, Windows 10 has given us one huge reason to love it. The start menu is back, and not only that, but it includes Cortana, your personal assistant. So from to-do lists to looking up directions, Cortana can do a little bit of everything, although please note that she only works in USA, UK, France, Spain, Germany, Italy, and China at the moment. She's still working on her Canadian work visa. Another addition to Windows 10 that might entice some of you out there is the new browser. No longer will you be chained to the ball that is Internet Explorer. You may have heard of it while it was in testing, Project Spartan. Well, now that browser is called Edge. Edge brings things like a reading mode, uh, making annotations to web pages, which can then be stored on OneDrive or shared, and it also integrates Cortana for voice control and search functionality. But don't worry if you don't like Edge, and a lot of people don't, then you still have the option to use whatever browser you want and it's fairly straightforward to get Cortana working with Chrome as well. Now, some of you out there may be a bit concerned about the rumors floating around about Windows 10's privacy issues. Rumors like Cortana collecting data or your personal information being used to cater certain ads to you in a web browser. So first of all, it's more difficult than it should be but you can actually manage Microsoft's personalized ad preferences. Click on Start, Settings, Privacy, General, and you can disable your advertising ID. And furthermore, you can opt out of Microsoft advertising on the bottom of the screen. And if you do a little bit more reading up on the interwebs, there are actually people who have created one-click solutions for turning off all of that stuff. As for Cortana collecting data, well, that's something you can't avoid if you want her to be useful. So just like Siri or Google Now, Cortana must collect some data to be able to help you to her fullest abilities. So however, you can clear any personal information and interests and disable Cortana altogether. So to do that, open up Cortana, then Notebook, then Settings, and just turn her off. No, not me! Don't turn me off! No, you can turn her off. It's okay. Another thing that people have been a little bit worried about is how the Windows validation works on Windows 10. Now, the frequent upgraders among you won't like this, but the way Windows 10 works is it checks for a valid key, so it checks you got a valid license, and then it actually locks that into your hardware configuration in a way that's a little deeper than Windows 7 and Windows 8.1 used to do it. So the good news is that if you reinstall Windows from scratch, you actually don't have to revalidate your key or activate again, which is kind of cool. But if you're a frequent PC upgrader, this might be a bit of an issue issue for you, so it is one thing to check into before you make the switch. But that's pretty much it, I guess. Windows 10 broken down a little bit further to help you make the jump from Windows 7 or 8.1. And honestly, honestly, I've been using it. I, I really like it. There's quite a few things that I like better than Windows 8.1 especially, and better than Windows 7. And there's more good news. Uh, you shouldn't be afraid to give it a go because you actually do have 30 days to revert back to your previous operating system before it automatically removes your old OS folder. So click here for our previous videos. Look over here for our Twitter handles. Apparently they're the other way. 
whatever. Leave a comment down below. Have you made the switch yet? Why or why not? And as always, don't forget to like and subscribe for more videos like this from NCIX.